Good afternoon and welcome back to Fight Sports Uncovered with me, your host, Mark Joubert. Friday afternoon, great to have you on the couch, wherever you may be, looking on your phone. Fight Sports Uncovered, another fantastic show lined up for you today. And uh, today we're coming to you from the Picanha restaurant here in North Riding. It's been really, really tough for businesses out there. So uh, big shout out to the restaurant business. They're getting back into it. Uh, soon we can all sit down and uh, enjoy our favorite meals at our favorite restaurant. And Picanha is one of my favorites. This place really, really rocks. So you guys got to get down here and check it out. Today's show, as usual, proudly brought to you by Monati Chocolate. And uh, wow, we've got a winner for you today. We're going to be announcing the winner of this fabulous uh, hamper in front of us. And uh, she is definitely going to be excited at walking away with this hamper. She got last week's question right. Um, the answer, spot on, well done. We're going to announce her a little bit later in the show. But before we get into the show, fantastic weekend took place out uh, in Vegas, UFC Vegas 4. It was the last of the Vegas runs at the Apex Center. And that event headlined by Dustin Poirier against Dan Hooker. What a fight that was. Many calling it a fight of the year contender and possibly fight of the year. And we're in June. July is still to come. We've got Fight Island still to come. Events stacking themselves up. We've got title fight after title fight lined up uh, in Abu Dhabi. So, uh, wow. But a fantastic, fantastic performance by Dustin Poirier, the diamond, walking away with that victory and ensuring that uh, the curse of the Irish dragon continues. Dan Hooker unable to break the curse, so it continues. And uh, Paul Felder, he's retired, so uh, will, that will, will that curse continue forevermore? We'll have to wait and see if there a different curse kicks in. However, for me, the other big talking point out of UFC Vegas 4 has to be Platinum Mike Perry proving that you don't actually need to have a corner to win in a co-main event. And uh, yes, his girlfriend was there, but I think he took a lot more advantage of the commentary team and what they were saying, uh, because remember, no fans, and the fighters can actually hear what the commentary team are talking about, can actually pick up on a lot of the, the, the comments, the suggestions um, that comes out of that commentary team. So maybe he's actually cornered the market here, if I can use that phrase, and ensuring that he walked away with that victory. So well done to Platinum Mike Perry on that win. But getting back to tonight's show, um, my guest, wow, uh, this guy has got a CV that I haven't seen in a very, very long time, particularly when it comes to sport and his experience in sport. And looking at it, I mean, building up to the show, I've spent the last couple of weeks talking to funders, to financiers, to a whole bunch of guys in the space around sports financing and sports funding, just to try and get a sense of what's happening in the space. We'll know that there's been a lot of discussions around brand rights, rights usage, guys wanting money back, sport hasn't been on, fans haven't been seeing their brands, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of that stuff has sort of seemed to have been worked out, but I think the landscape in sports rights is gonna change and it's gonna change very, very quickly. And my guest today is gonna to talk a lot more about that. But by way of introduction, he was a pro footballer in his youth. Looking at the number of companies that he's worked for, we're looking at Unilever, we're looking at Coca-Cola, Standard Bank, Nike, um, and now, he is the owner and founder of the brand, I think it was the, 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 yeah, the brand school. He also sits on multiple sports boards here in South Africa as well as across the African continent. My guest today, Squilly Gomedi, welcome to Fight Sports Uncovered. Thank you, thank you. That was a, an incredible int uh, introduction. Did I do it justice? Yeah, it felt like I was in Vegas myself. <laughs> I was about to take the ring. <laughs> <laughs> looking at that CV, and I mean, I'm looking at the CV again. Wow, I mean, some of the achievements that you have, some serious experience in sports. I mean, you're looking at basketball, cricket, football, rugby, and the Olympics. I mean, that's the crown jewel of sport, the biggest sports in the world. So, so I've been, I've been lucky in, in that way, right? Very. I mean, I, 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 I always um, 
say that I, I've been privileged to work for two of the most successful sports marketing companies and, and the, the companies that invest a lot in, in sport, that understand sport as well, in Nike and Coca-Cola. Um, so so that, that's given me access to some of incredible properties and, and events uh, around the world, uh, both as a, an insider looking in and understanding how they work, but also as a, an outsider, uh, as in someone who's trying to get the best out of those events as a commercial brand uh, manager or, or brand leader. And summarize quickly your experience in those spaces across those multiple sporting codes. What are some of the big sort of experience, some of the big learnings you've gained out of all of those big brands? Perhaps summarized in, in my, my, my very first uh, job at Unilever, um, I, I was taught that the consumer is at the heart of everything you do. So, so taking that to sport, the fan is at the heart of everything you do in sport. Whether you're a brand or a rights holder or a football club or, or an event owner or, 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 or an inventor, the, the consumer, the fan, the user of that, that, that property or, or that product or that solution is at the heart of everything you do because it starts with the fan, it starts with the user. So that for me is the single most important thing I'll say to, to anyone who's listening, that, that think about what you're doing something for. And if you, if you start there, then it would always shape the decisions you make about um, why you're doing it, um, how you're doing it, because you have to think about who you're doing it for and think about that entire journey of that person that you're doing, the, the, doing things for. So whether I was working in the FIFA World Cup or the Olympics or the NBA program or the UEFA Champions League, the, the concept is about the fan is at the heart and when we're launching a new ball or when you're launching a new marketing program, it's about what is it doing for the fans, why are we doing it and how is it making the, the, the fans life and experience better. But that's from the brand's point of view. Correct. But there is no brand experience, there is no brand association, there is no brand involvement yeah. if you don't have a decent set of athletes, you don't have a decent sporting event, you don't have a decent sporting code that is thriving, that is building. Yeah. And that's, I think, the crux of, of, of today's discussion because if you don't have these great athletes, if you don't have wonderful grassroots development, if you don't have fantastic amateur uh, sporting events and amateur sporting code and fantastic amateur athletes, yeah. you're never going to ultimately have the top professionals. And that's where the brands are investing. Well, the, the, the brands are not necessarily investing where the, the big uh, athletes are or the big events are the brands are investing in the place where they think consumers are or the consumer will be in the future. So, so, so sometimes it will be a, 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 an event or a program that today has very few people, but there is a, a trend that, that suggests that in five years' time, the, the vast majority of the 18-year-olds are going to be doing this thing, whether you're talking, um, you know, the, 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 the new crazes in, in social media, if, if so, so some, sometimes you, you don't even have the history or the uh, track record to put out there. But great brand managers or great uh, rights holders are able to see where the trend is going, where the consumers are going to be, and what role do I want to play in that. And that, that for me, is a crask of, of how to think about sports uh, commercialization or sport business. Okay, so... Fantastic, fantastic intro there because for me then I've got to ask this question. Yes. Why is it then that 10 years down the line, looking at combat sports and particularly MMA, and here I'm using the EFC as the banner holder, yes. why is it that we still do not see any blue chip brand involved in combat sports anywhere across the board in this country? So. Uh, that answer would, would be would have many different uh, areas to it, and, and and it can't be discussed and finished in one um, one hour show. But but let, let, let me start here. But first of all, you, you you do have a problem of brand managers who think themselves and, and their own values is what shapes their decisions, when in fact it is the consumers. It is the consumers who should be shaping their decisions. So so. I often hear people saying, my brand is not a blood sport. 
And I'm saying, well, yeah, okay, well, actually, but consumers of this brand, they, they don't see that as, bl as, as blood sport, and they are in there. And if you were smart enough, you would go in there, just find a way of going in there in a manner that talks to your consumers, that talks to your brand, and that strengthens the relationship between your brand, the sport, and, and, and the consumer. But don't use your own values and your, and your own... Um, um, uh, your own stereotypes to, to make decisions about a brand which is consumed by millions millions of people. So there is, there is definitely um, just far too many poor brand managers and, and poor brand management in the marketplace. And, and, and I know this because I, I talk to a lot of marketing people and I, and I hear these things a lot and I go like, that's nonsense. It's nonsense and you, you keep on repeating it because other people don't challenge you, but it's nonsense. Because okay. you are not you are not the brand. You clearly don't understand who your consumers are. Could that also be the reason why South African as a market, as a marketing market, always seems to jump on the bandwagon so late? Correct. Correct. Because I didn't see it coming because yes. as a marketer, yeah. I'm yeah. closed off. Yeah. I have, I'm, I'm in my own little cocoon. Yeah. And finally, when it hits and it's become a phenomenon, oh, we must now spend our money there. It's now too expensive. And it's too late. You are, it's too late. Uh, you're probably riding at the time when actually the next big thing has already started. And, and you, you're not going to see that either because you, you're hanging on to this thing that, that you've missed out on, on it. Uh, absolutely. Um, it's also the same reason why so many of the things that we do have been started elsewhere. How come, how come we don't have stuff that is being built from here from the ground up? Well, actually, people are there. There are innovators out there who are trying to do those things, and they go to brands, and brands go like, "No, nah, my brands, is, you know, we're not interested. We don't think this thing is going to have a future." And then, and then, and then they start it in the U.S., and then it it takes on, and then it comes here as a licensed product that you pay a fee for, and they go like. You know, but this thing was presented to you five years ago by someone else, and now you're paying license fee for it. You are paying double what you would have paid if it was built here. Yes. So yes, there is, there is a lot more of that as well. I want to talk funding with you, yes. because it seems as though that funding only seems to materialize at a grassroots level. It seems to be the further on it goes up the sort of ladder, up the chain from grassroots into amateur, into, into then your professional space, that funding seems to dry out because the view is, is that now hopefully we've got big brands involved yeah. and they're going to now take on sort of the mantle of, 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 of supporting the professional athletes. But then that leaves very few sports. And if I look at a lot of, 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 of the research and a lot of the funding that's taking place in South Africa, Lotteries Commission, yeah. Laureus, we're looking at the Sports Development Trust, all of that stuff and is CSI focused stuff, predominantly yeah. CSI stuff. Yeah. It's predominantly focused around cricket, rugby, soccer, netball and athletics. Mm. Everything else is seen as fringe, gets nothing. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a big issue. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a national issue. So I, I am of a view that uh, as a country, we're under investing in sport generally. So whether you're talking football or rugby or cricket or, or, or the smaller second, tier, second and, tier, uh, and third tier sports, we are under investing. If, if you, if you, I mean, I was doing some some uh, analysis just recently that um, if if you look at what Australia spends in sport, as an example, uh, it's something like 417 rands per person per annum, so per capita expenditure. Yeah. Wow! You know our, what ours is? 17 rand, one seven. That bad? It's, it's, how much? We as a country, as a, as, as a, from a public funding, let's, let's, let's come back, from a public funding point of view, we spend far too little. Uh, as a general rule, if you look at, at the global um, uh, norms, um, we should be spending a 10% on sport and recreation uh, as a percentage, percentage of what you spend on your health budget. Now, our health, our health funding, it's 5,500 on average. So, so we should be spending something like 550 rands per person per annum to, to, to really give this country its, its, um, its, its fair share of, of sport. Now, you can only do that if you see sport as a contributor of value, economic value to GDP, as an employer, and as a contributor to society. And, and until you do that, then you, you continue to do uh, almost pay lip service to sport. So, so part of our problem does begin with the fact that as a country and as, as a nation, 
we are just under investing. We, we don't see sport as an industry that creates jobs, employs people, and, and could be part of our solution to our unemployment and our economic, uh, stagnant economic problems. We're going to leave it there for now. We're going to take a quick break, but this is not over. So much to discuss there, 17 Rand. I'm going to leave that with you while we take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to dive deeper into that. Don't go away. Start up your day with faith-filled confessions of healing and health from the Healing School mobile app. Living a healthy, vibrant, and prosperous life depends on the words you speak. Download the Healing School mobile app today on the Google Play and Apple App Store, or visit our website at www.enterthehealingschool.org. Right, welcome back to Fight Sports Uncovered, coming to you from the Picanha restaurant here in North Riding. Get down, support local. It's, I mean, guys, there's restaurants all over the place. They are your favorites. Get down, get these businesses back up and running. We need these businesses trading. That's why we're coming to you from Picanha today. And today's show proudly brought to you by Monati Chocolate. Now, if you've been watching the show the last couple of weeks, you'll know we've been giving away hampers of Monati chocolate. And uh, my guest today, Squilly Gomedi, he's also had the opportunity to try out some of this artisanal bean to bar. I mean, this stuff is, if you're not a dark chocolate fan, this is not for you. But this stuff is absolutely fantastic. You've tried a Actually, couple of these? Even if you're not a dark chocolate fan like I am, this has been done properly. This is, this is really, really good. So, the good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So the orange and honey uh, is, is um, I didn't even taste it, the dark chocolate in that. It was just good. smooth, nice infusion. beautiful chocolate. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, then you well heard done. it. Squilly Gumedi has given us his view on what he likes, the flavors right here. So if you want to win a hamper of Minardi chocolate, very, very simple. Tell me which variant, which flavor did my guest enjoy most today and you can send that answer through via whatsapp plus two seven eight three eight eight five two zero four zero get that answer through to us and next week we could announce you as the winner because the winner of this wonderful hamper from last week Rafiwe, you know who you are congratulations we'll be in contact with you during the course of this weekend and we'll get this hamper over to you as quick as we possibly can Congratulations and thanks so much for watching the show. Right, so if you were following the show, first half of the show, you'll have picked up on that astronomically low number that we, as a South African community, puts into our sport per capita, per person, on an annual basis. And uh, just to refresh your memories, it's not a big number, okay? 17 rand. That's it, we put into sport in this country. Now, my guest, it's really to talk to me. I mean, how, how does it work? I mean, we start, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, we start off investing a heck of a lot in our grassroots. When it comes to amateur, it disappears. Professional, they must now look after themselves and hope the big brands are gonna pick up for it. Why is it that at grassroots level, at amateur level and going up the channel, is that we are seeing less and less brands getting on board and in particular in the combat sports space, we're seeing less blue chip brands. It's these second tier, third tier brands that are coming on board. Predominantly, in my opinion, they seem to be using it to try and get brand awareness for themselves. Correct. But there doesn't seem to be this longevity of those brands staying mm. on for any long period of time. As, as a general rule, you, you, want, you want to stay in a, in a partnership for three years at a minimum. You know, the first year is just getting to understand the sport and, and get yourself in there. Second year, you begin to, 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 to get your returns. And, and third year, you, you, you maximize those returns. So, so you, you, first of all, you just want to have a, a few more years with a partnership. <clears throat> as a country and a society, we do have some really tough conversations about our attitude to sport because it, it is showing up 
in, in, in areas that, that demonstrate that perhaps our sport as a whole, not just the small ones, even the bigger ones, are in a tough space right now. COVID-19 may have uh, may have come and, and, and kind of, uh, you know, showed up as if uh, COVID-19 has been the source of the issues, but actually, I think there were issues before COVID-19. Uh, you, you just you, you just you simply have to look at the the television numbers look at the attendances across major sports i mean no super rugby match has had 30,000 people in in this country over the last 3 years um you know in, in football other than the derby no not many matches top 40,000 people so so there are issues around we saw the same thing with the Zanzi league in, yeah. in, in cricket uh, the, the numbers are, are, are just not there so so the, 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 the um, report by the EPG Transformation um, Group, Eminent Persons Group, led by Dr. Passon, has come up with the numbers that show that less and fewer and fewer kids are playing sport in school. And, and that is now showing up in, in, the tele, in, in poor TV, TV numbers and poor attendances and, and just less people in community being involved in sport. So, so that is affecting the value of sport and it's affecting the the you know, the number of, of corporates that are seeing sport as a as an important uh, connection platform to their consumers. So so yeah, there's a, there, are, there are bigger issues. I mean, we got lots to talk about. We only have a very short show. This is going to be the start of a big, bigger, and longer conversation. I want to bring it back to fringe sports. Yes. Fringe sports are literally seeing nothing, Correct. investment, no funding, no finan financing. Um, what is it that fringe sports, the smaller sports, the, 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 the amateur promotions, the amateur events can do right now to start building a platform that becomes, that attracts more eyeballs? I mean, the eyeballs yeah. are there. We know it. Yeah. You know it. I know it. Yeah. But what can they start doing to start showcasing what it is that they do best um, right now in this time? Be more creative, right? Be more creative in how you you package your sport. Be more, be more creative in how you 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 uh, you gather uh, the content around your sport. So if you have an event, uh, you're not going to get a, a big broadcaster coming with the cameras to broadcast it. But you have options. You could do something around um, uh, Instagram or, or, or Facebook Live. You, you 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 could do something that you can all package your own stuff in, 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 in Periscope. So there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do to get more people. Make sure that you use every opportunity you have to gather data about who your fans are, who you're engaging with, because that data is important when you start talking to consumer, uh, to, to, to broadcasters and any other stakeholders who's interested, interested in, in your sport. So find ways to gather data. Understand that content is, is very important. Find ways to engage remotely. We, we now know that you can't have events, and events are big for smaller sports. So yes. we, we did a research recently as part of, of COVID-19 research, and, and we could see that for bigger sports, TV money is their biggest loss. But for smaller sports, it's, it's uh, membership fees, it's event fees, it's ticket fees. It's the fact that people are not there and the event are not there, which is the source of revenue for them. But find a way of doing events remotely because you now can have, have virtual events. And, and, and more and more people have, have done a virtual events and, and, and events have, have, have delivered some very good returns for them. It's not expensive as, as it used to be. So, so find a way to, 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 to be more creative and, and, and to engage remotely with your fans. Essentially learn from what e-gaming's been doing. I mean, e-gaming have, 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 have literally exploded now in this time. Yes. I mean, more and more people are getting involved in esports, um, And particularly if we start looking at the, the, the FGC, the fighting game community, yeah. uh, we've got a lot more events taking place Correct. online. Yes, they more can't get to a venue. More people are switching on. So, so is there a lot of learnings to come out of the e-gaming space? Absolutely. I mean, for, for not just for small sports, for big sports as well. So for e-gaming and e-sports has provided a, a, a blueprint on how to continue building uh, your, your, your sports in the time of COVID. So for as long as we are socially distanced and, 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 and operating within a restricted environment, e-gaming has provided a, a, a blueprint on, on how to, to stay engaged with your fans. And it's, it's vitally important. But beyond that, um, whether, you know, in, in the future when we have a vaccine or, or, or this has passed, that will still be, the, the e-sport model will still be a very important model because it 
just means that far more people are able to engage with your sport and with your with your event uh, than those who are able to come to your events. I mean, only a small uh, fraction of people are ever going to come to your events. Yeah. The rest of the people are, are too far, and and they are they, you know is that far too removed. So find a way of keeping them engaged and, and keeping them um, uh, connected to the sport. That's that's where the value sits. I want to jump to another. Like I said, we could be talking about one topic for an entire show. If we look at the Olympic movement, yes. 2020 was meant to be an Olympic year. Yes. It's now moved to 2021. Yes. Within that event next year, if it take pl takes place, there's meant to be five combat sports on, on display. Boxing, a Taekwondo, wrestling, and Judo. Yes. Karate, and, and let's understand this, 2020, Karate will be showcased at the Olympics for the very first time. Yes. One of the oldest combat sports on the planet. Um, I mean, that says a lot about the Olympic movement, uh, especially when we look at some of the other sports that are being showcased at the Olympics yeah. when karate is making its debut. But the fact that you've got sports like MMA mm. struggling to be recognized mm. as a sport, being declined by gains for now for the umpteenth time, which means access into uh, the Olympic movement has been prohibited. Yes. What is that also saying about combat sports as a, 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 a an attraction for fans? I mean, does it talk to the fact that, that brands should not be sponsoring it, should not be looking at it? Well, um, more often than not, brands, um, brands would end up following where, where consumers are. So the sports are gonna continue to grow. Combat sport is here to stay. There is a there is a, 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 a big a combat sport organization in, in, in Asia called One Championship, absolutely, which which is massive, and, and it's come out of nowhere, and is now one of the most valuable properties in in, in sport. I, I I expect more and more countries, more continents, and more regions to to create more of, of those. Like we have EFC here and UFC uh, in, in in the US, uh, there will be more of those, and 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 fans are just going to have to keep up. Because, because the truth is the fans are there and they're following this, they're following it online, they're following it um, as, as events, they're following it on social media, it's, it's there to stay. Um, and, and, and I think, I think um, as far as global recognition, um, they, they have a, a, a way to go in terms of convincing the, the, the mainstream sport leaders, uh, your IOCs and FIFAs of this world, but you know what? Um, the biggest recognizer of sport are fans, and the fans are there. They're coming. Final thoughts for you. Your advice. Youngsters wanting to get into sport, youngsters wanting to look at funding events, uh, get their little promotion up and running, what would your advice be? Um, just, just make sure you understand. You understand your, your, your sport and, and your ecosystem. Make sure you understand what it is that you're offering and what, 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 what you know, how, how is it different to what is available in, in the marketplace and do it and do it well. Um, use social media and, and digital platforms because there's a lot that is there right now that allows you to do stuff that you can't do uh, you know, because you, you, there are no events, you, you are physically distant. So, so think social media, think creatively and, 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 and make digital and social media be your friend. Squiddy Gamedi, thank you so much for your time. This is not the first time we're going to be chatting. We're going to be talking a lot more. We're going to be unpacking a lot more in terms of this funding of sport because quite clearly from that 17 Rand comment, it, I'm still blown away. There's a lot more that needs to be done in South African society for the South African sporting community. Uh, and yeah, we're going to be talking a lot more about this. Absolutely. For you as fans out there, thanks so much for watching the show. Mind-blowing stuff from my guest today. Um, hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to an action-packed month of July. We've got Fight Island, Abu Dhabi, massive, massive uh, title fights on the line uh, coming from the UFC. Maybe by then, we'll see a little bit more boxing taking place. Maybe we'll find out a little bit more about the heavyweight championship. Who knows? So much more to unpack. So many sports still to start getting back to play. But until next week, protect yourselves at all times. We're out.